Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will be looking at Punnett squares, but we'll be uh, crossing two genes at the same time. So um, through that exercise we'll be looking at the law of independent assortment of character traits. All right, so what does this mean? Well, all possible combinations of the alleles must be taken into account when crossing two parents together. So in other words, we have to do statistics. Okay, so the law of independent assortment of character traits basically says that if you're looking, for example, at two genes, you have to look at all the possibilities of combination for those two genes. That's what the law says. Now, you see a bunch of colors here. I'm going to try and make this as clear as possible. I know this is something that sometimes people are confused with in terms of how this works. All right, so let me take it step by step. We have, just look at the, the top part over here for now. We have for uh, the mother, let's say, two chromosomes. So we have the orange shade chromosome and let's say the purple shade chromosome. Now, when the gametes, the reproductive cells, are created, we have, um, we have said already that these chromosomes separate, right? And only half of them will end up in any given egg. So for example, for the orange trait, half of the chromosome would end up in a reproductive cell, and half of the purple chromosome would end up in a reproductive cell. So this could be one egg, for example. It could be another possibility would be this half would end up with this half in another reproductive cell. Okay, so we have to look at all the possibilities. Now, if we do look at all the possibilities, what do we have? Well, that's what I kind of tried to illustrate below. So you would have, for example, this that could go with this, or this one could go with this one, or we could have this one with this one, or this one with this one. So these are the combinations that you get. You get four different combinations, right? Always one of the orange traits with one of the purple traits. Orange, purple, well, lilac or whatnot. Light orange with purple, light orange with lilac. The same thing goes for the father, right? So these would kind of separate when the sperm cells get created. These would separate. These are two different sets of genes. So the darker blue could combine with the darker green. The darker blue could combine with the lighter green. The lighter blue could combine with the darker green, lighter blue with lighter green. You get four different possibilities of sperm cells based on two genes. Now you can imagine when we look at an actual human being, we have so many chromosomes and so many genes on those chromosomes, the possibilities are endless. That's why uh, very often uh, siblings will not necessarily look the same, act the same. We all have different personalities as human beings. We all have different physical traits. And even if we have the same parents, odds are we're going to be somewhat very or somewhat different from them because of all these possibilities. Now, this is all nice and dandy. I did it with color, hopefully, to make it clear visually. If it's not clear, now let's do it with actual genes. So, let's say the mother was capital A, small a, capital B, small b. Okay, so two different genes here. So, she's a heterozygous individual, right, because she's got dominant recessive for each, um, for each uh, gene. So what are the possibilities? You could have capital A with capital B. You could have capital A with lowercase b. Or you could have also lowercase a with capital B or lowercase a with lowercase b. There's always four possibilities if you have two genes that are being crossed together or that are being uh, segregated to create uh, reproductive cells. If we do the exercise for the father, we could have capital A, lowercase b, capital A, lowercase b, because he's a homozygous for each trait. You could have, with the other allele, capital A, lowercase b, capital A, lowercase b. Okay, so you'd have, again, four possibilities, but in this case, the possibilities are similar because the father is a homozygous for both traits. All right, now how does this work in a Punnett square? Now I know this looks like a lot of information. I'm gonna take you through it step by step. And then after that, we're gonna actually do an exercise together. 
Okay, so if we want to predict two traits at once, we need to use a Punnett square, but we're going to do a dihybrid cross. Okay, so we're going to get 16 possibilities of offspring. Step number one, we have one parent here, one parent here. So we need to determine what the reproductive cells would contain as far as the genetic code goes. So capital B, capital S is one possibility. Let me do four colors. Capital B, lowercase s is a different possibility. Lowercase b, capital S is a third possibility. And lowercase b, lowercase s is another possibility. So we would retranscribe these possibilities over here. These are the four types of gametes that this individual could produce. We do the same exercise with the other individual and we write the possibilities over here. Then we'll do the crossing as usual. This one with this one and we write down the letters. This one with this one and we write the letters. And you'll notice, and it's very important, you put the same letters together. So the B's go together and the S's go together. Don't put B S B S. No, because we want the piece together because they are alleles of the same trait. When we go to interpret the genotype into the phenotype, we need similar letters to be together. All right, so we do the crossing. This is what we get. So there's 16 possibilities, which, got, uh, which I wrote over here. So one out of 16 is capital B. Let me just erase this. It's going to be a little bit clearer. Okay, so... Out of the 16 possibilities, one is capital B, capital B, capital S, capital S. We have two of them that are capital B, capital B, capital S, small s, and so on and so forth. Okay, so, and you'll notice maybe when you have two heterozygous individuals, so like this, capital B, small b, capital S, small s, what you're going to get automatically is, let me get the highlighter, one of these, two like this, two over here, one like this, and so on and so forth. You'll see that there is an actual pattern. Let me use another color. Uh, let me use orange. <clears throat> You'll have, sorry about that. You'll have one, two, three, four. So there's a kind of symmetry to it. Let me use a dark green. So there is one like this. There is, um, I don't know, let's say uh, yellow. I don't know how that's going to look. Let's say like this over here. And let's use uh, this purple. Like this, Ooh, that's a little dark. And finally, let's use a gray. And we have this, okay? So you can see there's a symmetry within the whole chart. And so you have the results over here. Now, that's a lot of genotypes. Um, you could be asked, by the way, to express these as a percentage. So one divided by 16 times 100. Obviously, you could write down the corresponding percentages. Um, now, if you're asked to determine the phenotypes, this is what you need to do. So how many phenotypes? Well, before I, I'm sorry, before I even talk about that. So we know that capital B stands for black, lowercase b stands for brown. I didn't, I didn't uh, point that out, but oh, the key is not even written here. Okay, well, I'm telling you now. Capital B stands for black, lowercase b stands for brown. Capital S is for short, lowercase s is for long. Okay, so black and short are the dominant traits. So as soon as you have a dominant uh, allele, automatically the individual will be black, for example. And as soon as you have a capital S, the individual will have short hair because that's the dominant trait. So I like to sometimes color code things because it makes my life easier, right? I can work faster. So anything that's black, oops, wrong color. Anything that's black, should have uh, some yellow and anything that that has capital S will be long, right? Right? 
So in this case, we have black and short. We have one, two, three, four, right? These four, but we have four categories, but we actually have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine individuals out of 16 that are black and short. Black and long, we just need yellow. So just yellow, we have these two categories. So we have one, two, three, three out of 16. Brown and short, lowercase b, but capital S. So we have two categories and we have three individuals in total. So three out of 16. And recessive, recessive, we have one out of 16. So these should add up to 16. Nine plus three plus three plus one gives us 16. And you should do the same exercise for the genotypes. When you find your genotypes, just to make sure that you've covered everything, add up your numbers. They should add up to 16. And I can tell you that they do in case you don't want to do the exercise right now. Okay, so this is how we go about it. Now, if this is still not clear, we're going to do an actual exercise together to make sure to, that it's clarified. Okay, so a long neck yellow gir giraffe, so capital T, small t, capital Y, lowercase y, mates with a short neck orange giraffe. So this individual is recessive all across the board. I'm missing a question. It should say find, uh, using a Punnett square, find the, um, the different possibilities for the offspring. So what do we do first? We are going to write down, okay, so we're gonna write down, we use uh, green, what the first individual is. So the first individual is capital T, small t, capital Y, small y. And it mates with a giraffe that is homozygous recessive. Okay, so that's what we're crossing. What are the different gametes? What are the possibilities? So we're going to do our crossing like before. Capital T, capital Y. Capital T, capital Y. That's the first one. Capital T, small y. Capital T, small y lowercase t, capital Y, lowercase t, capital Y, and lowercase t, lowercase y. All right. Next, we have lowercase, lowercase. This one's going to be easy. Lowercase, 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 lowercase. So we get four times the same type of gamete. And you're going to say, but do I need to write down all of them? Yes, you do. Okay, we have to be structured. There's always four gametes, whether they're different or the same, you still write them down. Okay, so now, next step, we are going to rewrite these gametes over here. So one, oops, one individual, let's say the mother, has these gametes. And the father has four times these gametes. So when we do the crossing, we'll have capital T, small t, don't forget we put the same letters together. Capital Y, small y, capital T, small t, capital Y, small y, and because these are four of the same, we're going to get four times the same thing. I apologize for my handwriting. I'm using a little trackpad. And it's not easy to write properly. Okay, so this is what we get for the first line. Second line, capital T, lowercase t, lowercase y, lowercase y. Now to save us some time, and you'll have to verify with your teacher if you're allowed to do this, to save us some time since all four are alike, I know all four squares will contain the same thing. So I'm gonna go like this. Next one, lowercase t, lowercase t, capital Y, lowercase y. And again, I know it's gonna be four times the same thing. And the last one, lowercase t, lowercase t, lowercase y, lowercase y, and for the same reason again, 
four times the same thing since the father has four times the same reproductive cell. Now let's analyze this, these results. So I want to know what the phenotypes are out of 16, X on 16. Now, let's look at what's what. We said that a long neck, so a long neck is capital T, and yellow, capital Y. Short neck, short is lowercase t, orange, lowercase y. So long is, so I can write it on top here, long would be a capital T, so tall, T for tall, Y for yellow, long would be capital T, and orange would be lowercase y, short would be small t, and yellow capital Y, short would be small t, and orange would be lowercase y. Okay, so how many out of four, have at least one capital T, one capital Y. Well, out of my four possibilities, since they're always the same across the board, I get one line, so four times, that are capital T, capital Y. So over here, I would say four on 16. Long and orange, capital T, lowercase y. So it would be these individuals. So again, four out of 16, four on 16. Lowercase t, capital Y, lowercase t, capital Y. So four times, again, four on 16. And lowercase, lowercase, four out of 16. Okay, and they should add up four times four, right? Four, eight, 12, 16. They do add up to 16, it makes sense. So this is how you would go about it. I hope this was clear. If you still have trouble, um, there are two things you can do. Ask questions and practice, practice, practice. Practice will make you perfect. All right, so otherwise I will see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.